Hi, and welcome to Brian Bonnie Makes. Today we're going to be looking at a repair for a guitar stand. If you happen to have a Hercules triple, double, or some single guitar stand, and the height adjustment lever has broken, this DIY might just help you out. One day I went into my studio, and as I lifted the stand, a number of small parts fell on the floor. This caused the top part that holds the headstocks to come loose did not come apart, but it came loose, leaving it unable to hold a guitar. It might have been perfect to hold three mandolins, or three ukuleles, but there's no chance of getting three guitars on it anymore. If you look at the photo, I've marked the handle with a red ring. On my stand, and many more I found on the internet, the rubber handle has decayed and turned into a gooey mess. Now, this failure hasn't happened to all handles, because I've canvassed my friends, and none of them have the same problem. But that doesn't help me. I've had mine for 10 years or so, so I'm not asking for warranty repair. I tried to contact Hercules three different times. I used a general email address that they listed for support. I used their general contact form. And then I used their dedicated support form. As of today, I have never heard back from them. Now I start digging around about the company because I suspect that things have changed. I find more people complaining about their inability to get service parts and all these photos of broken handles you're looking at now. It looks like the company was sold quite a few years ago. They are now owned by KHS, a huge Taiwan-based music conglomerate. The website shows that they own a whole roster of formerly US-owned music companies. That's too bad. I really like the stand, and I don't want to throw it away because one small part fails. The adjuster that broke, I never really used anyway, so there must be a fix. I searched the internet to see what people have done, and immediately found a quick fix. Just put a nut and bolt in the now open hole, and it locks the head at its maximum height. That should work fine. But I wasn't too keen on doing that because I figured that maybe somebody had released a 3D file of the complete handle. I never found that complete handle, but I did find a lot of people who were in the same boat that I was in. Now I've heard some people claim Hercules is sending out replacement handles, or at least they were promised. And I actually know of one person who was promised a handle, and he's still waiting for it. At this point, any support from Hercules is vapor at best until confirmed. What to do? So what I'm showing here is my final version of the Hercules triple guitar stand replacement handle. That's a pretty long name. The reason why it's my final version is because I've spent the time to optimize the design for strength and ease of printing. I thought it was important to reduce the time it took to print and to also make it easier to print without overhangs or support material. I recommend you use a strong and hard plastic for this model. I'm using ABS, but you should use whatever's good for you. The part is actually quite a complex piece. This little index notch here will become an alignment feature. What I've done in my design is to put a bolt right through the middle of this to add some strength. In the original design, this is cast as a single piece, something I can't do with a 3D printer. I'm using six 440 stainless steel bolts to clamp the two halves together, plus one 440 threaded stud as the lever pivot. I've also designed my part to be much more bulky than the sleek original. This is to add strength, but it does give it a different look. The two sides clamp tight around the lower pipe, but leave clearance for the upper pipe to move up and down. There's a fixed bolt head on the lower pipe that just fits in here. It also acts as an anti-rotation feature. That's why it doesn't tighten all the way. A bit of play here is fine. This opening here locates the fixed end of the lever spring. The spring actually touches the metal pipe. The plastic is only a guide. 
This other recess here is to allow extra clearance to the guide and the locking pin. It's a bit wider than the handle, which is good because it keeps the handle from falling out if the pin should ever get lost. So what have I done here? Looking at the section analysis, you can see how I cut away material. The CAD program thinks it's making solids, and the slicer program tries to fill solids with some percentage of a pattern fill that it creates. Most of the time, these two work nicely, but when you're optimizing, you need to know what each is doing to your designs. I don't want random infills. I want a certain amount of strength in certain areas. And to do this, I've made a lot of holes. The slicer will see the edge of the holes and give me a reliable number of layers. This also reduces the total amount of plastic and the time it takes to print. Nice thing about this one is that when it cools off, it releases the part. And uh, I just stack them close together. So there's no attachment. So that's uh, the two sides. I am really happy with this. This turned out beautiful. My name isn't filling in anymore. My new uh, lightning holes work. Nothing came through. The part seems really solid and strong. Well, I guess all we have to do now is look to see how it came out and fits the uh, stand. And this, this, this is exactly how I hoped. Wow, I'm really impressed. So now we have the, uh, the part and the uh, this recess here is for the index screw that also locks the pole together. So, so this, this little notch here has to go into the notch in the tube. So that way you can easily locate the, the whole part and then the, the front piece. That same notch will go over the other half of that. And uh, that should move smoothly, and the bottom should lock onto the pipe. So now, this is the back piece. It fits around the pipe nice and easy. And the screws that are already chased out. is six bolts that hold it together. The old design had eight bolts. I'm going to use this piece of twist tie here. I 
have my finger on the spring to try to take the tension off. Oh, that was good. Push first the, the washer and the lock nut. That's a complete assembly. So here's the device. It's pretty good. So now you've seen the problem. You've seen the design of a new part, the manufacturer of the part, and the final assembly of the finished part. So now you can go on to Thingiverse and download the files and print it yourself. I've only put my name on the side of the part to discourage the uh, people who steal files and try to sell them. If my license allows people to print the part without my name on it, but the people who steal the files are too lazy to take it off, it's a nice identifying factor. So that's why I do that.